right, greetings one and all. I am on a Google image search because I want to make a vinyl graphic. And I'm going to use Rhino, Rhinoceros 3D. I'm going to use it to draw out a graphic that will be cut using a vinyl cutter. And we're going to basically make a vinyl graphic, a sticker that you could put on a binder, skateboard, bumper, wherever. I'm going to focus on a simple graphic that's quick for me to draw because I really want to get to the point of the basics of making a vinyl graphic. And of course, as you know, the first basic is finding a good graphic we can use. So that's why I decided to look for tribal vector art. I love all the different cultures out there. They've got some beautiful, beautiful images, nice styles. And so I just did an image search, tribal vector art. It's a good one to go to. I'm going to find a simple graphic. I'm going to use this one right here. Let's see if it works. Looks good. I'm actually going to use this one here. It's probably a simple one. I can just get right to the details. I need to copy this image, but I want to make sure it's the right file type. This is a PNG. This will work. You need it to be a PNG or a JPEG. It will not work with all image types. These two are guaranteed to work. Um, I like one that doesn't have transparency, so this is even better because it's got a white background. I'm going to save the image. I'm going to note where I save it. Or I'm going to click Save Image, and I'm just going to crash the browser. That could work, too. Thank you, Google Chrome, for the Restore button. Let's try it again. Save Image as. Ah, there it is. 204 Free Tribal Vector Pack. Boom. 204. That's the key. This is going into the Downloads folder. Now I'm going to open up Rhino. I'm going to use Rhinoceros 5 as the version I'm using. I'm using 64-bit, but that's because I have a 64-bit computer. And the first thing you want to do is find out what file type you're supposed to use. Find out what kind of grid. If you're in my digital tech class, we're doing everything in small objects inches. Small objects inches. So to make sure it's small objects inches, the best thing for you to do is to use File, New, and under Template Files, you should see Small Objects Inches. Click it. Click Open. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to put all of our graphics in top view, looking down top to bottom. I'm going to double click on this word top because I don't need to see perspective front or right. That will just confuse me. Click, click, double click. Now, if I use my right, air, my right mouse button, I can move things around. Um, also, if I use my wheel, I can zoom in or I can zoom out. I like to get it nice and big. Um, and our graphics are going to be somewhat under 3x3. Three three. So what I need to do now is display the background image. And that is a tool or a command called background bitmap. Now notice, all I did was, I didn't even click my mouse. Notice where my mouse was this whole time. It was down here. I just went to the keyboard, typed out the letter B and the A. That's as far as I got before. Now I see that command. It's highlighted. And it says background bitmap. That's my command. I'm just going to hit enter. Bam. Now you're like, wait, what happened here? Well, it's looking for an image. That's, yeah, downloads will work. There it is. Bam. Double click. Okay, so this is the first time you're like, wait, this is not what I expect. That's because uh, we know we want a background image, but Rhino doesn't know how big it's going to be. So we're going to click the two corners. So I'm going to click up here for one corner. I'm going to drag it out over here and click again. Now this vector art here is basically the size of graphic. I might need to resize that, and I'm going to focus on this alone. So when you have graphics and you're drawing it and you're going to trace it, you're going to need one of two tools. By the way, at this point, look up here. You'll see it says, it still says choose background bitmap option. While I'm on this window, I can move it. I can uh, scale it, which means I can resize it. So let me zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to scale this one because I want this thing to fit. I want it a little bigger. So I'm going to click scale. I'm going to click once towards one corner. On my second click, I'm going to hold and drag. And I'm just going to make it bigger. Click again. And I don't know if that's the right size or not, but it looks pretty good. I'm just going to hit enter. By hitting enter, I'm no longer in background bitmap command mode. I'm now just ready for the next command. I'm going to zoom in using the wheel of my mouse. I want it nice and big. I want to see as much of the graphic as I can. This is all I need to be able to draw my graphic. 
Notice there are some straight lines here, although this looks like it has a slight curve to it. And then there are some curved lines. Uh, definitely straight here and here and here. This is curved. So what we're going to do is we're going to compose this graphic in multiple takes. And the two tools we want are polyline for straight lines and control point curve for curved lines. Now before we do this, I recommend you make sure O snap is selected and the box that says end point or end is checked. Check end under O snap. By the way, sometimes you'll go to O snap and you'll click it and you won't see anything. And you click it again and it sort of pops up. Just make sure that end is checked. Until something along here is checked, it won't show O snap as being highlighted. All right. So we have, that's, by the way, that stands for object snap. It means one object will connect to another object. And this is really handy for connecting your lines. So let's go ahead and do it. We've got a straight line here, down to here, 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 and here, and then we have a curved line. So let's do our straight lines, get them out of the way. That's the polyline tool. Click. And now I just want to get close to this. I'm just going to click out here. I want my line to sort of be right along there. And right away, you're probably going, you know, that color line is going to be hard to see if we're inside. And I agree. So one of the things you can do is you can change the color of your line. And we're going to do that using the Layers Inspector. And you may or may not have this over on the right, but there's the Layers Inspector. So I'm going to click here. If you don't have it, you just click on it, and that should open it up. I think I'm going to try green. So I'm going to check the green, and I'm going to go ahead and try to draw it. So I click once here, and then notice how what I did, I, I haven't clicked it yet, I used the right button to move it around. I'm going to click up here, just a little above. I like to be able to see the line. Now, you right away, you can see that that line isn't exactly straight. It's slightly curved. So we could actually do curved lines if you want. I'm going to go ahead and do it straight the first take, and then I'll show you how I do it the other way. So I'm just going around, and I'm hitting all our main points. And from here on out, it's going to be a curved line. So I'm going to hit here, and notice how it's still there. All I have to do is hit Enter. Now I still have those lines there. If I click it, it turns yellow. See that? If I deselect, it's green. See that? You can see the line there. That's why I like to change the color of the line. And there's another straight line here, straight line here and here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again one more time. I'm going to click here, click. I want that line straight, so I want to just see that it looks straight. Come out here, and go down just a little bit, hit enter again. Okay. So one end is here, one end is over here. And so I'm going to connect this line going out to here. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So I want to do a curved line there. And then I'm going to do another curved line. I'm not going to use the same control point curve. I'm going to make them two and just connect them together. You'll see what I mean. So I go over here, it's control point curve. By the way, the command is just curve. You can just type the word curve and you'll get it. I'm going to zoom over here until you see, now notice, when I hover near the end, it says end. That's because I have O snap end checked. So when I get to the end of one line, if I click what it says end, that means this will start at the same place the other one left off. Now for control point curve, you want to kind of click just outside of the curve a little bit. And notice what happened here. I get over here, and all of a sudden it wants to check end. It wants to click there, and I don't want it to. So in order to avoid that, I'm going to probably have to just go outside a little. Or I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Now notice where that line is kind of there. I'm going to click out here. Notice how you can kind of pull it around, and you can move it up and down. You can see where that's going to go on the next click. If I were to click it here, it would be way down. So I want to just kind of come out here. And as long as I can get that line kind of where I want it, that's probably pretty good. I'm going to click there. And you'll find sometimes, now watch this, I'm going to actually click outside. And there's a reason for it, because the next one I'm going to pull it in. See that? So even though I did that one point there, I click outside, I can get this line where I want it. And honestly, if I do this right, I'm going to zoom out a bit. Yeah, at this point, I'm, I'm, it's not going to work, so I'm going to come back out here and click about there. By the way, there is no magic way, there's no one secret to learning this. It really just takes practice. Doing it over and over. By the way, if you like, I don't like that point, hold down control and type Z and it removes the last point. And you can redo that.
Go all the way out. I'm actually going to go out here, and I'm going to hit Enter. See that curve there? All right. Now I'm going to start a new line, starting here and going out. Actually, I might want to do it the other way. I'm going to go all the way. Let's zoom out. And I'm going to start all the way down here and go the, this way. So I get my control point curve. Notice how it says end. Now I do have a bit of a problem. It's going to start here. I'm going to click and kind of go out a little bit. There we go. And I go right to where it says end. And I hit enter. Now I want to show you something. So I've already drawn the first part of this shape. It's actually two shapes if you look at it closely because there's a gap between this one and that one up there. But this is all one solid one. I'm going to hide my background bitmap. I'm going to do it in a way that doesn't remove it, it just hides it temporarily. I type out the command for background bitmap again, I hit enter. And where it says visible, I click it and now it goes away. So now what you can see, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, so I can always bring that image back. Now what you see is several lines. See that? Basically, these three curves all make up one shape. I want to join them all. So I have two different ways of doing join. One way is to actually just type the word join. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is click on this icon that shows the two little puzzle pieces, the colorful ones. There's only several colorful ones. And I can click on here. Notice the command still says join. And now it says select object for join. So I click once here, click once here. Now watch this, I click the last one. Because they're all together, it automatically joined all of that for me. And now I have that, this is all one closed curve. And by the way, when you do vinyl graphics, you want them closed. All right, so let's get the background bitmap open again. I'm going to unhide that. And now I'm going to do the remaining lines and go from there. Enter. Background bitmap. Visible equals no. Zoom out a bit. That looks pretty good. Let's do join. Hit enter. I'm going to just type the command join. Click, click, click. That's join. Okay, at this point, I have my graphic. It's green, but that's okay. I can use any color I want for vinyl. Uh, one of the things here is this is still two graphics. I'm going to want to group these together. And I'm also going to want to put a little box around it. Now, the reason why we're going to do a box around it is so that if I want to print extra graphics, uh, I will have them easily separated. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. Here is a list of uh, a series of vinyl graphics that my digital tech students have designed. Let's see. Notice how this thing is all grouped together. This is really nice because I can take this and let's say I, I have room for more. I can drag this out. I could rotate it if I needed to. And it's real easy for me to click and draw. And when I go to print, you'll see the boxes around here. They sort of separate one graphic from the other. So we don't have to worry when, when it, one student wants to print out one of these objects. They can uh, cut in between the two lines where these boxes are. It'll be a little bit easier for them to do that. All right, so I'm going to create a box. I'm going to use the rectangle tool. Just click on here. I want to make sure that I'm beyond here. All right, this is the lowest point, so I'm just going to click out here, go out, go above. All I need is it just to be bigger than the vinyl graphic I have. So notice right now I have three different closed curves. I want to group them all into one. So I highlight everything, and I type out group hit enter, and now it's all grouped. I can move it. There we go. Uh, this is almost, the. let's say I need to change the size of this. The last thing I want to cover is changing the size. That is called scale. Click scale. Click once. Click twice. I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. Okay. So that's what scale does. Allows you to resize. One more time. Just type out the command scale. Notice there's a scale, a scale 1D, scale 2D. We're just using scale. Click the object you want to resize. Notice it tells you press enter when done. Press enter. Origin point, it just means just like where do you want it stretching out from. I want it to stretch from this point here. So I click on that corner. I like to go one corner to the next. And the reason why is uh, when I click, it's real easy to adjust it exactly how big I want it. Let me show you how not to do this. When you do scale, this is what you don't want to do. 
You don't want to select the object, put enter. You don't want to click once here and then have your second click be right there because watch what happens. I barely move it and it goes really fast. Whoa, hey, hey, whoa. And so it's really hard, right? You see how easy it is to accidentally make it way too big? It's because those two points are way too close together. But if you do them across from each other, it's just way easier to do. This is the right file type, so you just got to save your changes. And then you turn it in the way your teacher wants you to, or just however you want to do it. Thank you for watching.